v is less than 0 no current increase any voltage no current ok. So, if that occurs I say I have replicated a switch is that I have replicated but as you know this is only ideal situation. So, in reality I figured out for a device like a diode of course this voltage is very small called V gamma this is called V breakdown. So, one now sees that till certain small voltage of V gamma in the forward direction that is V is positive the current is very small but beyond that value current starts exponentially rising ok. Whereas in the case of reverse bias that is negative bias for a large amount of reverse voltage there is practically small current or no current theoretically but there is small current but suddenly at that large value what we call breakdown huge current start flowing. So, we are now limits from the two sides we cannot operate device in the negative value more than the breakdown because then the current is infinite. We cannot increase too much of this voltage because if that happens this current will also shoot to infinity. What is the problem with large currents? If you see I V what do you see essentially I V characteristics slope wise what is it giving you? A resistance is that clear? So, as soon as there is a resistance there is a I square R drop in the device and if I is very large or infinite as I say the, the voltage drop is very high the power dissipated is very high and it may burn finally. So, I must limit my current even in the forward bias so that V positive cannot be any number okay. and I cannot go beyond certain value of V break because again then the current starts rising. So, this is what diode is trying to do ok. So, we will see why diode gives this characteristics and can I control to some extent this and some extent the slopes. If I do that I will be able to come closer to the ideal switch which I was looking for is that correct. So, that is what the design is about how close I can get near to the ideal switch. However, as I said in diode there is no third terminal uh, just two terminals. So, to change polarity how do I do it? So, diode may not be used as a switch often because there is no third terminal to control it and I just showed you a MOS transistor or a bipolar transistor which has a third terminal can probably do much better control is that correct. So, we are interested in I V characteristics in the case of diode uh, ok one interesting way it is plotted for normal diodes is 1 upon C square versus V normal diode and it gives you a linear characteristics like something like this not all diodes close to ideal diode this kind of 1 upon C square V character can you or if you plot C V what kind of expression do you expect? From this can you tell me what kind of expression do you expect? C square again kya ho gaya? Why is something Y x ka koi relation is square term aata hai? Which is the mass per parabola? y square is equal to 4 a x ok. So, it is essentially a parabolic values and uh, if you plot it back into 1 upon c square it may look like a straight line. Can you think this has some advantage that by changing uh, voltage I am able to change the capacitance. Normally if you have done experiment in the lab hopefully so this is your whatever ionization you are putting insulator here between the two plates whether you change the polarity plus minus or minus plus the capacitance does not change is that correct. These are all ceramic capacitors which you see often used in the circuits. But I many times need that if I change the voltage at least the reverse this is for minus 
PR you should call. We see the capacitance starts initially is very high and starts reducing probability. What do you, what what is that essentially means? There is a capacitance which is variable of voltage ka kya de sakte? Variable voltage capacitor variable voltage capacitors or capacitor which varies with the voltage. Kya naam ho sakta hai? Very cap variable capacitor okay. or varactor because reactance is come from rea this so it can be called varactor. Where do you think such things will be required? Any yeah very good he said radio but any system in which I want to change a frequency typical frequency can be obtained by either this circuit or this circuit. These are essentially RC or LC circuit. So if R is fixed or L is fixed and if I vary C 1 upon RC I can vary the time I can vary or 1 upon root LC I can vary the frequency I can vary. So all tuners we were just tuning okay, all tuners for FM. Tuning is done by so all televisions everywhere when you see change something by that band or the station essentially you are using a varactor or a very cap. So you can see the simplest of the device has the largest amount of application in consumer electronics and therefore device may look very trivial but it has an application. Therefore, we must study can I do a better control on CV of choice of my value max to min within this voltage because there is a voltage limits there or not there depends on all that I may have to design a vector. But to do this I must first know why C varies with C. If I know that then I say okay ab mein batau kya kare. But if I do not know that how do I control okay or how do I change. So the theory we will like to see for a diode how this IV and CV are controllable and to get control I must know how do they come actually okay and what parameters they depend on. Obviously any property of a uh, electrical or any mechanical or chemical any property is decided by what by material take a many material like this is a wood of course this is a formica but it is a insulator what does that mean? That means the electrical charge cannot flow through this. So one way of course one looks at it may have such a large resistance that practically no current can V by R, R is infinite so no current. Okay. So these materials we say there are certain materials which do not pass carriers so very easily they are called insulators they do not pass wood, wood is the best insulator or glass, silica okay, another good insulator. Okay. So we are trying to see one kind of solid state material okay there are of course three kinds of state of a material can be solid, liquid and gas. As of now we will not discuss about gaseous systems and liquid system though liquid semiconductors have come maybe some other course will tell you what are those. But in this course we will only concentrate on solid state materials okay. If a material in solid state what does essentially differ from liquid and gas? It is a close packing okay. There is a heavy bonding between the atoms and therefore they are closely packed. Whereas in the case of liquid they are loosely packed and in the gas there is no packing and therefore free to move okay. So we always say we will use only solid state materials. And if we are using only solid state materials then I am trying to look into three ways of looking into solid state material. One of course as I say insulators okay. The properties which we are interested in this course is only electrical properties or electronic properties. We are not really keen to know mechanical properties any other property they are relevant may be very important. But for this course we say okay we will stick to electrical properties. So we say insulator means very high resistivity material. Resistivity is essentially given by what term to R. How is related? 
assumption here is you have a piece of material a bar of a materials let us say this which has a length L width W and thickness T. So, W into T is the area and L is the length is that clear. So, obviously if rho is large and L by is constant for a piece then R is large. So, insulators are those materials whose resistivity is extremely high. Then the next kind of material which I may use are the materials which are conductors. They are like metals, conductor means which conduct electricity easily, much more easily. Easily means what? Their resistance must be very low. Obviously, if resistance is low then the current is easily available to you and if R has to be very low, rho has to be very low ok. Highly good conductor rho is 1 upon sigma. So, sigma being larger means r being smaller is all that we are looking for ok. So, these are conductors all metals in general are good conductors of electricity. Please remember thermal conductors and electrical conductors are not necessarily same in most cases they are but not necessarily same. But what is this course is looking for neither we are if I have a conductor then I have no control real why voltage laga sub current mil gaya. what do I control then ok because conductivity is a natural property of the metal copper silver gold take any nickel they are intrinsically metallic and there are huge conductivity is made available to them. So, I cannot really control on them. So, they are no good use for me except when I am connecting something I will use them because I do not want resistance be available there. But I want the third kind which has variable resistivity ok and these materials are semiconductors. Their conductivity or resistivity is lower than insulators resistivity low much lower than insulators much higher than the conductors ok. And the importance of the semiconductors uh, is that rho is variable I can change the resistivity of this material ok. And if I change the resistivity I change the resistance and therefore I can change the current passing through it at my will is that correct. So, Semiconductors have one interesting property that they have a controllable resistivity available. Conductors you cannot resist, insulator you put anything it, is, it does not allow, so it does not help you. Conductors cannot be changed, so cannot, so no use for me. When I am, day when I, what I say, I want control. If the two materials do not give me control, why do I use them? So I saw, okay, in between there is a range which I will be able to control. And therefore, all the semiconductor, all the devices which we use will mostly be used out of semiconductors. So, why the course? I am first day I am only trying to push you why we are doing this. We will start just now what exactly is this. But to prove my point that why I am only looking into semiconductors is this thing. Even a material which is in solid state, either of three of them can exist in the three forms. Okay. What is this dependent on three forms? So, we say every material at least solid state we start with has some order I said e. that means that atomic arrangement is such that they actually have something called uniformity of atomic arrangement or to say if I choose the smallest number of atom arrangement and I replicate it n times the whole crystal is translated ok. This is crystalline something a smallest unit of atomic arrangement if periodically I can add on and on on left and right and down and up everywhere it will create full size of the crystal and therefore the material is called crystalline. So, all crystalline materials
essentially if you this is your crystal maybe any shape so if these are your atoms you can see they almost look in order so all crystalline materials have atomic order which is repeatable okay which is repeatable and therefore they are crystalline in nature crystalline has an advantage we'll see our whole semiconductor theory is based on crystalline silicon or crystalline semiconductors there are amorphous semiconductor devices maybe at the end when i talk about photovoltaic to some extent i will tell you why we are looking for amorphous okay though it is not good definitely it will not be better than crystalline materials the other possible demarcation could be if this is not crystalline then it can be no order absolutely no atomic order okay so such materials are called amorphous in nature you are surprised to say you that silicon is single crystal but the silicon dioxide layer which makes all devices possible is amorphous in nature so amorphous problem also are interesting for us okay. and what could be the third possibility no 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 semiconductor yeah all crystalline will be like this any one of them third is which is also interesting which also we use in devices let's say this is your crystal let's say there are number of such small crystallites there each has an order but between this and this this and this there is no order is that clear individual let's say this are atomic arrangement something like this this may have something like this okay. so there is small crystallites are there which have order but there are number of such crystallites in a material which have no same order as each other these are called polycrystalline poly means more than one so a single crystal may have what uh, uh, sorry crystal means single crystal then it can be in the form and no order exist we say amorphous and if there is order exist in number of small parts there but no comparison between the two then we say it is polycrystalline so in most of the theory which we will work today uh, onwards today onwards we will look for crystalline materials except for SiO2 as I said all semiconductor material which i am going to use are crystalline in nature is that correct so we are going to work on semiconductors and we are going to work on crystalline semiconductors okay single crystal as we call single crystal silicon okay. so is that point clear so why only of this kind okay because the problem as i see why i am so very keen about this we will not going to detail right now we will come back to theory little later but one interesting feature may be a worth telling you you have already seen this semiconductor uh, say material block let us say i apply a voltage across this bar of a material okay then depending on the length width and thickness and for a row given to you it will give some resistance okay so what law it will follow ohms law if r is the resistance of the bar across this then v by r is current ohms law v is i r okay. this statement of ohms law is essentially the very important for us can you think of a ohms law in this form e is elect please because you know we are going to use energy term sooner in our theory so this is i will call electric field this symbol and this i will call energy 
at least till this band etc are over we will use this later I may interchange between at this this E and capital E both are electric fields but for a while at least I want to differentiate between electric field and energy is that correct. So what is do you think this is also Ohm's law? No, even otherwise J is called current density. So I by A dimensionally let us see whether it reaches there. Sigma is 1 upon ohm centimeter or one can say ohm is resistance into centimeter okay is that okay and what is electric field voltage by distance or centimeter now this centimeter centimeter area cancels So J is equal to sigma E is another statement of Ohm's law. All semiconductor devices do show at least in one transport mechanism this J is equal to sigma E. But however let us say this carries some carriers n number per cc, number per cc carriers which is making current to move or current to get. Okay. So what is the charge associated with n per cc q into n and let us say the electrons or carriers are moving with a constant velocity which we call drift velocity. What will be the output of this? Qn this is charge per cc this is centimeter per second j. So this j is equal to sigma e is also j is equal to Qn v drift is that clear if n is fixed by the resistivity we have numbers that means this and this must have some relationship. So we are looking for relationship V as a function of electric field. So larger the electric field hopefully it is proportional to some extent then larger will be the current this is what Ohm's law was saying. So this proportionality constant is given a name mu which is called mobility, it is called mobility. See look at it I have still not started anything great I am just trying to say how do I get things okay. So obviously if I want current control of course in the velocity voltage is coming from this field. So current voltage I can control through E and this but there is a proportionality which I am seeing here is mobility and now this is where my problem started that the mobility in a single crystal material even amorphous it is very poor very very poor mobilities of carriers but even in a single crystal depends on if the transport is along this or transport is along this planes as we call it. So if the mobility changes with the direction of atomic arrangements that means the current will come differently in different planes of arrangement. So therefore we must know which planes I should keep the material where I want maximum transport because I want this to be higher as much as possible. So that at a smaller voltage I will have a larger velocity and therefore larger currents okay. So whole device theory rests on this principle. How much is this mobility getting affected by material? So at the end of the day I must do some material science because I am really looking into current for electrical engineer what is our ultimate I and V or final C and V but I and V. So I keep saying oh if I have to control I and V I must control some way voltage to current relationship by some other method. Oh so I figured out drift velocity oh but drift velocity is something also resistance possibly can be changed through this number. Okay. 
so that means if I change the number per cc there, I also change the way I can have larger mobility. I have now a control of current with voltage. Is that clear? That's exactly what device people do and nothing great. All itna sara book bada bada likhte, usme kaam itna hai. At the end of the day, we are only looking for a control of current with increase of voltage or decrease of voltage. The choice is mine. How? And that's exactly we must therefore study little bit of material science. Because after all they are looking into materials. All this mobility or some terms must come from those material arrangements. Okay. Because different material arrangement will give me different things I know that. So I must know which one I should use to my advantage. So as an electrical engineer I may not be very keen ki are wo atomic arrangement hai ya nahi hai, carriers hai ya nahi. As long as I get my IV. So a circuit person says damn care what device does. What characteristic shows? So he is only looking for characteristics. But when I he says no, I want this characteristic, then someone has to tell hey, you can't ask like this. Then only device person will tell you, okay, I'll give you what you want. Okay. So we must have of course so there are people who work on devices, there are people who work on circuits, there are people who actually make them, so they are technology people, and there are people who finally design a circuit, how it will function to a system, they are called designers. Uh, I being what I am, uh, in my time there was no super speciality business, so we used to learn almost everything. Okay. Uh, we koi sa choice nahi tha laga. So I have worked in my earlier time, my PhD was more on devices, then I worked on technology for almost 25, 20 years plus, then suddenly someone said, no, 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 you must teach courses in circuits, so I started teaching networks, circuits courses. And then I became designers because industry in Bangalore wanted many design engineers from IITs. So maybe I am the myself and another present your head are the two exceptional or rather I should say bad people who probably can do research or not do research now, whatever it is. From this end to the other end, because we know a lot of physics and we know a lot of technology, we know design as well. But other faculty probably are very smart now. If there is a designer, he said device killer. मुझे नहीं पता मेरे को तो फंक्शन दो आई डिजाइन तो आई विश दैट इन माय कोर्स आई विल ट्राई टू एटलीस्ट एट सेकेंड ईयर लेवल फोर रिलेट दी सो दैट एट द एंड व्हेन यू अदर टीचर से यू विल हैव सम बैकग्राउंड इन दिस दैट व्हाई दे आर टॉकिंग लाइक दिस सो आई एम स्लाइटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर टीचर्स इन दिस ए कोर्स तो आई एम ट्राइंग टू कनेक्ट यू फ्रॉम लेफ्ट टू राइट एवरीवेयर so it's not essential. A expert in circuit need not know devices or need not know technology. Okay. Or designers these days are only software people. They hardly they have only tools and they just take, take and everything is designed. Okay. At then they say where is the transistor? So I don't know. It works. The beauty of all that is it works. Okay. So it's not that it doesn't work. But someone has made so much things for them available now as a library. You can use that now. So who created library? People like us, you know, chota admi, kaam karne wala, blue collar job, white collar nahi. So, hum aapke liye blue collar log hain, baaki sab to abhi white collar hai. So let's look at, of course, nothing against those who are doing it. And they are great researchers, they have published great new work, nothing against. But I am just trying to tell you why we connect everything everywhere. This is my weakness. Okay, so we, as I say, I already given you enough background why I am interested in to understand little bit of material under science of at least semiconductors, so that I'll be able to then understand the device properly. And if I understand device properly with reference to material, then I'll be able to actually start controlling it. Is that clear? That's my ultimate aim. Yesterday when I was showing you slides, I did say I am working on lanthanum oxide. Chemistry is a lanthanum oxide. But that is going to be the 22 nanometers insulator for MOS. So someone has to work for it with reference to the characteristic of a device or a circuit. Just depositing lanthanum oxide has no meaning. I am looking for electrical properties which I am looking. So a person who is in electrical engineering also has to tell people here or do himself 
what he wants okay? and this is what I am going to tell. So what kind of semiconductors we are looking for? The kind of semiconductors we are looking for are elemental. There are only two kinds of semiconductors which are elemental, silicon and germanium. For many years the next part which I am writing was never used by us. This is a funny word I am using, compound elemental. This we hardly use any time earlier. But now we are. Silicon germanium both are uh, elemental but their alloy or combination compound of that can act like a elemental semiconductor. Can anyone suggest anything else related to silicon either kya lagaun ki wo bhi semiconductor. Okay, abhi you have never heard of it. Carbide, silicon carbide is another semiconductor which is behaving like not compound but not element but together kind. This is very important material now as I said other day Intel is using silicon germanium devices now okay, at least for soldering okay. and therefore this is relevant now in future earlier no one used it so we say forget it now we are using so I thought I must tell you now new thing. So this I may club any one. The other is okay. If you see silicon, it has an atomic number of 14 and atomic weight of both accuracy nahi chahiye to 28 hi likho gram per avagrad number whatever it gram per mole but 28.09 is more accurate because some books may say 0.09. Some may write 0.0876. So these are all trivial. Size is enough. Okay. If you see the arrangement of this protein by Bohr's model, how will it look? In the first two, in the next eight, then four. So these are tetravalent materials, silicon, germanium are tetravalent materials that is valency of force. In chemistry we know this stable material can only last if the bonding or whatever it is it gives you 8 electrons bonding okay some way either by giving or sharing whatever way it is okay. So if two silicon atom has to exist I mean silicon has to exist two silicon atom must come close together to have four four each okay. that is why the bonding will be like that. Similar is germanium. Silicon, now silicon and germanium together are this so four from germanium four from silicon four from carbon four from silicon so they can still form a semiconductor. The other possibility is com materials coming from three five compounds semiconductor. All are semiconductors, though I have not written, maybe I should write. Height come per gamera. Compound semiconductors coming from three. What are the three elements of third group which we use? Gallium, indium, aluminium. Arsenic is fifth group. Fifth group. Aluminium, gallium, indium are generally from the third group. Okay. So and what are the fifth group elements? Phosphorus, arsenic, antimony. Okay. They are generally used from the fifth group. So possible materials which we can have is gallium arsenide which is the most popular among the three five materials, gallium phosphide. You can also have gallium what should I another one? Okay. No, no. Okay. There is another possibility. You can also have say aluminium arsenide, aluminium phosphide also. 
but you can see there is another possibility I can create. What is it called? Gallium X aluminium 1 minus X R. What does it mean? Gallium arsenide is mixed with aluminium arsenide and I can adjust the X value and it will still give me 3, 5 compound semiconductors. Okay. What is the advantage of this X I am saying? I will show you later. By changing this X, I will be able to change what we call band gaps. That is what we have not done so far, but band gaps. And in optical devices, the energy released in the light form is inversely proportional to the band gap. So for optical generation, light generation, I need to tailor my band gap. That is what I will tell her. Is that clear? That is what I will. Is that clear? Gallium phosphide may give yellow color, okay, for example. But I want blue. Very difficult to get blue, or rather, very recently, 8 10 years ago, we made blue LED. Okay. Because the band I wanted does not match with the blue one. So, what did I do now to get blue? There is something we did. Okay. So, there are indium arsenide. Indium phosphide, indium, many of such kinds are possible. Same way with aluminium, okay. They can be 3, 5 compound semiconductors, okay. And of course, as I say, mixture of them also can form new semiconductors. This word which I said here is called band gap engineered material, band gap engineered materials. After all they form 4, 3, 5, so 8, that 8 is still possible. Then I say I can have 2, 6, they also form 8, 2 and 6. So we say okay, one of the most popular one is cadmium sulphide, okay. cadmium sulphide or Cadmium tellurides, cadmium is from the second group, tellurides and sulphurs are from the sixth group, okay. And therefore, two six such materials, very popular one earlier for not for normal this zinc sulphide. This is very important material. This gives you a device which is essentially not so much used in electronics per se. But related to electronics is called acoustic sensor material, vibration test ke liye. Okay. So it is a very important material because in instrumentation you may require transducer from vibrations or acoustics to electrical. This material will help you. Okay. okay. So there are cadmium telluride, cadmium sulphide, cadmium selenide. Okay. Selenium is also one sixth group. So combination of this can be attained and there is another material which we created Hg mercury cadmium telluride, yes. Mercury is also second, cadmium is also second, telluride is from the sixth group. Okay. It creates a device which is called NCT, I will not tell the name, you will go and see what I have said in NCT. Mercury cadmium telluride, kya karta ho gai? Very, very important material these days. Which people are very keen about this material? Defense of any, any nation, defense industry or defense people are very keen to do work on this. Anything, why defense will be very keen? Anything, any idea? What it must be doing something, of course they are all optical in nature as I said you, all these materials are use only for optical devices. Which optical device I am looking for MCT? Infrared detectors and infrared this. So there is a research already done, US has that and the Indians also have but no one, no one is telling them. We have a small palm equivalent small planes which has this MCT detectors called night vision detectors. 
it flies around a kilometer and comes back like a boomerang. It is a small plane which has this detector from three, dimen three directions or n directions. And since infrared are not visible, that's why they are called infrared. Uh, actually, scans the tanks positions and this without knowing the so-called enemy. But also, they also have some detectors. So it's okay. So these are something which defense people are. It's called for night vision devices. Okay. So we'll not look into this course, but just to give an idea where things are happening and why so many materials were searched. Okay, so is that clear? So these are three kinds of materials we will be using and this course of except for this photovoltaic part or optical part where I will come some of them, most of the course will actually concentrate only on silicon. As a circuit people we are more interested in silicon device, come what may all other things are great, very great but not useful. Not useful means general purpose. I cannot make a microprocessor out of this. I want a 64 bit or 128 bit 4 core microprocessor. They will do all bad job. Though they look to do great otherwise. Only silicon can do it. So for us ultimate aim is work on silicon devices. Though we must know what is the options and if someone want an interface between us and them. I know what interface I should create. Okay, so is that point clear why silicon and why other materials? Yes. And all of them as I keep saying typical resistivity of silicon or materials which we are going to use is 10 to power minus 3 ohm centimeter to 20,000 ohm centimeter. This is the row I will use in almost all devices. Semiconductor. What will be conductivity of good metals? The uh, resistivity much higher than 10 to power 8 ohm centimeter and above will be good insulators. 10 to power 8 ohm centimeter will be a good insulator ahead. 10 to power 15, 16 is far better. And anything less than minus 3 ohm centimeter will be conductors like copper, silver, gold, aluminum, all of them. Okay. In between range is the all that range we will work at. In fact, this can go up to 10 to power 5 the, as such, but the problem with even 6 sometimes, the problem is the, the way they can be made in the technology, you cannot go beyond 20,000. Theoretically, yes, externally, no one can go beyond 20,000. Very difficult to create. Highest the resistivity, can you think the purity of the crystal will be smaller or larger? When the resistivity will be larger, when the carriers are few, what does that mean? As pure a material you create, the higher is the resistivity. And since by technology, I cannot make ideal pure material, so I cannot really reach very high this at least in crystalline semiconductor this is all that is possible and uh, most of the time I will use 10 to power minus 1 to 1 ohm centimeter results maybe 5 at best. This is the range I will use in almost all circuits. Is that clear? Some other area maybe minus 2 I will do but in most cases this is the range with which I will work. So please remember that resistivity has direct relevance to us because it converts or it controls my current and therefore I must know what resistivity I am working. As I say we are looking for crystalline material and the atomic arrangement of this crystalline material is called primitive cell. We are done somewhere but I will quickly do that. Essentially primitive cell is the smallest atomic regimen which can be translated by x, y, z or a, b, c head to get the newer primitive cell. Okay. Is that clear? So the smallest atomic regimen. For example, this is 
this may be a primitive cell and if i translate all this by vector r i can create identical cell head but if the shape of this primitive cell because this is rhombic but it is something like this now this is silicon primitive cell now this to replicate it becomes very difficult in three dimensions okay so the primitive cell is the smallest possible arrangement which is repeated but to actually visualize it in creation we normally don't use primitive cells okay we use simple structures which are called unit cells it has been found that there are only 14 ways in which atomic arrangement can be created for unit cells okay each such cell or each such primitive cell or arrangement of atom is called lattice or lattice अमेरिका में हो तो टाइस बोलो लैटिस ईच एटॉमिक अरेंजमेंट ऑफ ए सेल इज कॉल्ड लैटिस एंड वी से लैटिस इज आर स्मॉलेस्ट अरेंजमेंट विच इज रिपीटेड इन पीरियोडिक ऑर्डर एंड देन इट विल बिकम व्हाट व्हाट मटेरियल विल हैव पीरियोडिसिटी क्रिस्टलाइन सो दीज आर द क्रिस्टलाइन मटेरियल व्हिच हैज सम प्रिमिटिव ऑल यूनिट सेल व्हिच इज रिपीटेबल टू फॉर्म the large crystal area is that clear to you so a cell which i am looking into may not be this but i look into a cell which is more cubic in nature and we say at every corner there is an atom this is called simple cubic cell simple cubic cell at every corner of the cube there is an atom this is one if i replicate it above left right below this each atom is connected to how many such lattices how many is that eight how do you say four above four down okay so each atom is shared by corner for the eight such lattices since there are eight atoms actually how many atoms in unit cell is only one so we say number of atoms is 1/8 of 8 which is 1 is that but let us say before we quit today i actually put in the center another atom okay now how many atoms are there in the this is called body center two one from the corner and one from the body okay so in a bcc body center cubic lattice number of this is called simple cubic number of atoms are two but let us say on each surface six surfaces are there i don't know which are missed or not now each surface is shared by how many two because adjacent one only can share it iske idhar wala ya iske idhar ek hi usko attack since there are six surface atoms they will be shared by another six equivalent of that so total number of atoms which they are contributing to a this is how many 3 plus 1 so this arrangement is called uh, face centered cubic or fcc and it has number of atoms 1/8 into 8 plus half into 6 is that clear now why we are interested in this number before we quit today just think of it if there are larger number of atoms somewhere dense as we say then the, when the electron is moving 
what is this atoms do they also have their influence of electric field around so if the electrons pass through large number of atoms they'll have to share their energy with someone if they pass easily they will not share okay so they have larger energy to move forward and ahead that's what drift field do so we want to know how many atoms are in the cell and will they contribute to the number which will allow or what we call mobility will be found also not all directions will have same atoms to face okay the kind of silicon structure is show you so we'll say okay which way we should normally use devices so that the minimum amount of what we call energy transfer called scattering will take place this is why we must know which planes we should work on or which materials we should work on. is that okay so we'll stop here for the day see you then next time monday